Welcome. That was a successful lighting. <laughs> Woohoo! It's actually been a while since I've been up here and gotten to see you all from this view. I was asking Reverend Ray how we light the candles because I forgot that we have acolytes that can do it for us now. So it can show the passage of time. Um, thank you all for coming today in this um, midwinter <laughs> um, service. I, we have really lovely weather today. I know that we are forecasted for rain later and looking at, you know, even flood warnings. I think that I had been worried because I forgot to fill my car up and I was thinking, oh, now I'm going to have to do it in the rain. But um, but it's a beautiful morning and I'm so glad to be here with all of you. And thank you for those of you who are tuning in from home as well and watching maybe later this week. I'd like to thank the um, those who are contributing and joining with today's service with Reverend Ray, the speaker. Um, Children's Time will be by me. The altar flowers were from Gaun Lee. The greeters and ushers today are Midori Nishimura and Wendy Eng. Piano is Joanne Shea. Fellowship Tea is from by Connie Kobayashi and the Zoom AV team, Herb Gong, Brent Yamashita, and video by Brad. Thank you all for all of your contributions. Are there any announcements today? Good morning again. Um, <clears throat> our first announcement is just a reminder that we will continue to do our best just to protect one another. It's still flu season, the weather is really weird. So if you're feeling um, under the weather, please consider joining us online and let us just continue to do our best to protect one another. You know, last week, Reverend John commented that we are the church that is very serious about eating. Yeah. And I want to say he's so right about that. And uh, during this week, we had a lot of uh, wonderful eating events. And, and I want to thank the crew last Sunday who prepared dog gook to celebrate the Lunar New Year. I think that was a great success. Uh, we raised over $400 to support summer camp. So thank you so much for your generosity to help support our youth. Thank you. And Tuesday, we had uh, Koyukai. So Judy, um, Grace, Lori, they, the planning team did a great job. We had someone coming from Alzheimer's Association, Alex. He did a wonderful job, very informative uh, for, for those who participated. And we ate bibimbap. Next slide. So Susan made this bibimbap. Uh, and Lori made a wonderful bun cake, so we all enjoyed. So thank you, thank you, the team. And so next Koi Kai will be with Ben and Joy. So stay tuned. And this Friday, uh, we had we call ourselves the young professionals, but Lara came up with this word, the cool kids. So, <laughs> so I guess we are roughly those who are in uh, 30s and 40s. <laughs> Uh, so we had a uh, potluck dinner at my at my house on Friday. So if you would like to join our our group, then please let us know. So we are just uh, just trying to meet um, like at least like quarterly. You know. uh, we had a wonderful time together. Okay, and so um, I want to thank everyone who participated for this. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so I of course, acknowledge all the people who who. Uh, Here's that slide. I acknowledge all the folks who brought dinners uh, this week. It was a very successful week. I think we should give our cooks a round of applause. Um, unusual, this year we had a, a noticeably smaller number, which I think is a, a good thing. I mean, I think that's a good thing. There were noticeably fewer uh, clients. Um, and we don't, I put up, you know, at requesting to toiletries. We really don't. We, you know, people came with just buckets of stuff. And so there is so much stuff there that even the, uh, uh, Life Moves Coordinator was like, I, I think we have enough toothbrushes. You know? so, <laughs> thank you, everybody. So we won't be collecting uh, toiletries or breakfast stuff. So again, thank you. Oh. And thank you, Anne. We, we appreciate you. Uh, and, and came out every day, every day to uh, organize this. So we really appreciate it. I have just one photo. If you, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Joanne, Dave, and Nico, and Rosemary, uh, that's, they shared with this water, so wonderful, thank you. Um, next, so uh, we started the season of Lent, <clears throat> so we are going to have Tuesday night 
Bible study. So there is no textbook. Um, so, so I gave you this. So this will be the kind of textbook. So it's called Soap Bible Study, very simple way of reflecting on the word. Um, Soap stands for scripture, observation, application and prayer so if you're interested just please just let me know so we will have six weeks of program starting from this tuesday um, and for children and youth we are going to have a, a coin jar challenge so the idea the overall theme for this season of lent is from less to more a Lenten journey of release and renewal the idea is that uh, we know when the cup is it full there's no more to put in so uh, it is the idea is to empty ourselves so that we can fill in with god's love so to symbolize that uh, we have a coin jar over here so during children's time you can bring any coins from rolling around in your house or car then uh, the idea is that we collect them and so that we accumulate them and donate uh, and add them to our easter breakfast so that we can help support the people in Japan who are suffering from the tsunami and the earthquake at the beginning of this year. So if you forgot about the coins, please don't worry about it because we have five more weeks. Yeah. But the idea is that uh, parents, please uh, um, remind them that to bring coins. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's penny, nickel, dime, or quarter. <clears throat> it doesn't matter, anything uh, rolling around. Uh, the idea is that to give, to give out, to give up, to give up, to give out. So. Um, thank you for considering this. Good morning, everyone. Um, hey, I'm glad I got, you know, I'm starting this announcement at 10 past the hour because now the, the chairs are more filled. Yay! And I'm glad that everyone's here enjoying the sun before the rain comes. Mark your calendars for our spring fellowship. We love this event as an opportunity to bring us all together. I know we worship together on Sundays, but let's um, find an opportunity to be in community with each other and um, bank uh, going ahead with the theme of food. Food is love in this church. So of course it's a potluck and we are going to be trying uh, uh, courtesy of Grant and Kenneth's idea, we're going to do Japanese hand rolls called tamaki. Um, and if that sounds too uh, a little bit out of the or original idea for you, we also will have foods that um, other foods as well, followed by um, a game night. So we will um, be having a Mahjong tutorial. So the disclaimer here is I'm ABC, American born Chinese. So I'm gonna be teaching you my way of playing. <laughs> it's Hong Kong style. Some of you, I know there's many different styles. This is Hong Kong style. There will be no money exchanged and it's just <laughs> for fun. And there's also game night as well for those who are not interested or have other games they wanna play, please bring. So sign up is on the website or you can also tell me and also this is fellowship we like all of you to be involved so if you're interested in helping please reach out to us and we welcome you thank you thank you joanne thank you thank you the planning team they always work hard to include include everyone so i really appreciate that and i'm looking forward to learn about mahjong <laughs> next so paul all right, this is a non-food announcement, so. <laughs> um, I'm leading the, uh, with the JCL, the, uh, I'm not sure if all you know, but tomorrow is the 82nd anniversary of the Day of Remembrance. And that's the day that President Roosevelt signed the order to bring all Japanese Americans in the West Coast to relocation camps uh, and then to internment camps for three or four years, I believe, um, three years. And then, um, uh, on tomorrow at noon, we're going to go have a little a quick tour at one of the camps, I mean, one of the relocation camps at the Tanferan Shopping Center. Most of you probably didn't know that there's a relocation camp there, and there's a nice memorial. Everybody's name's on there. There's a barracks. There's a statue. There's all kinds of really nice stuff there, and um, it's free. It's at noon tomorrow, and it's also President's Holiday Weekend, so it kind of works out that way. Everybody's off anyway, so please come join us um, at um, at 12 tomorrow. And also, I noticed that um, the Nichibei newspaper is putting on the film of remembrance 
in San Francisco and San Jose. And what those are are all the films that all these uh, little short films that people made about um, internment camps, relocation camps, Day of Remembrance, um, and you can sign up uh, with at an each base site. So that's a really interesting event for Japanese Americans. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, when I was saying I was going to be a liturgist today, my, my kids aren't here, but one of them said that they always liked it when I counted down with the breaths, because she said that sometimes she holds her breath for too long and then she runs out of time to do all the three breaths and everyone else is done, you know, <laughs> so I thought, um, so what we like to do in our home is we like to take um, maybe let's say three seconds in and six seconds out, a little bit longer out than in, and it helps us all slow down and relax. So together, let's take three deep breaths within. One, two, three, hold. Out, one, two, three, four, five, six. In, one, two, three, hold. Out, one, two, three, four, five, six. In. One, two, three, hold. Out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Let us begin the call to worship. Let us gather in worship our Lord God to begin this season of Lent. Season of preparation. May we prepare and reflect in this time so that we can truly recognize where our faith is rooted. Amen. Please rise if you are able to join us in hymn number 378, Amazing Grace. Please be seated. <clears throat> For the song of centering today, um, I'm going to do a solo. Um, I never wanted to do that. <laughs> it is not my intention to torture you and make you listen to my song. <laughs> but um, uh, today, actually, two of our youth were going to sing, but one of them couldn't make it. But they will sing next week, I hope. Um, so I had to figure something out. But on the other hand, I just wanted to share with you a song that really helped me when I go personally going through a time of wilderness in my life. Uh, this song really touched my heart, so I, I wanted to share this with you. It's originally written in Korean, uh, but translated in English beautifully, so 
Uh, please allow me to sing in my own language the first verse, and then I will continue to sing in English. I hope that this would provide you a food for thought and reflection as we begin this season of Lent. Forsaken me, I'm humbled at your feet. There's nothing else here in this world that I can hold on to. I stand here in the wilderness. You are my help and my defender You are my light that shines in darkness You are my counselor and my only friend Here in the wilderness Your hand is watching over me I stand I stand you are my partner when we find her You are the one who gives me purpose You have brought me to this place to make me your own Here in the wilderness Your love is resurrecting me I stand Here in the I lay down desires on my heart And break them at your feet I let them go So I can dream your dream for me Let it be done to me According to your word So that the world can see your love Reflected in me Here in the Thank you so much, Reverend Ray. That's amazing. 
Will the children come up for children's time? Thank you. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Thank you all, everyone. So I'm so glad that so many of you are with us here today. I actually, I, I didn't underestimate how many kids would be coming in on ski week, but <laughs> we are good. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I was recently inspired by. I was listening to a podcast um, and they were talking about, about bees and how intelligent they are and how they're finding out that they're, you know, they're just finding more and more about how intelligent they are, about how they can see colors that we can't even see. They can see ultraviolet colors. Um, so where we might see a, a yellow flower, they could see it in multiple different ways um, to tell a flower that gives very good pollen versus a flower that doesn't. And um, they can recognize human faces and they can, every flower, every different type of flower is like a different puzzle box that they have to remember. If they know a flower that gives great pollen, they want to go back to that, but they have to remember how to unlock it to get to the semen, to get the, the pollen. And so, it's so interesting learning about bees. And I was thinking about the different ways that I'm grateful for bees, because especially in this season, I like to, well, I like to start my morning off with a cup of tea and some honey. And especially in the season of allergies that come up, you know, they say if you have some local honey, it can help relieve um, some of your local flower allergies to everything that's coming out in bloom now. Um, so I wanted to pass out these. Could you take, could you take one and everyone pass one? Take one and pass it along. So these are honey sticks. And you can have them afterwards as a snack, or you could put it into some tea or lemonade if you'd like. And I wanted to tell you just a few facts about these honey sticks. These honey sticks are um, they're six inches long and they're about 0.17 ounces, which means five grams. So each honey stick is about one teaspoon. Um, so in order to make one teaspoon of honey, how, how, how many bees do you think it takes to make one teaspoon of honey? Any guesses? It takes 12 bees their entire lifetime to make one teaspoon of honey. Field bees visit 50 to 100 flowers during each trip. So if you hold up this, this teaspoon of honey, that's about one cup of tea for me. And so I look at that and I think, hmm, I'm like, this is pretty valuable. And at the same time, one honeybee might be thinking, what am I doing all this work for? I'm doing all this work for you, just for you to have just like one twelfth of that cup of tea. But that could be kind of, you know, why am I doing all this work? I don't know if you guys ever feel like, why am I doing all this work? Why do I have to do all the math problems? Why do I have to throw out all the garbage? You know, but you can think that what bees are doing when they're making the honey when they're gathering the pollen they're not just doing it to make the honey for my tea when they're doing that they are pollinating other flowers right and just in the course of their work of what they want to do they happen to be making it possible for all of our fruits and vegetables to grow they happen to be doing things just in the course of their life how many fruit how many bees what does it take to make you know an apple to grow so when we think about that, we can think about the things that you might be doing in your life too, that you might see. What does it matter if I'm doing this, if I have to do this, if I have to do this math problem, or if I don't get this, if I have to learn this? Well, sometimes in math class, if you don't understand a question and you raise your hand and you ask the teacher, that helps maybe three other kids who didn't understand that math problem too and didn't want to ask themselves. And sometimes, you know, when you just whatever you're doing in life, that's not the only thing that you're doing. It's not the only impact you're making. It's not the only way you're making life better for other people just by being in it and doing what you're doing every day. Thank you. I just want to end it with a quick prayer and then you can go to children's time. Dear God, thank you for the bees. 
Thank you for all of these ways to appreciate all the little things and all of the big impacts in our life. Please bless the children and I hope you help them understand the wonderful impact they have in each of our lives and all of the lives they touch. Amen. You can go to children's time. Now we have the prayer of the people and I can't put off the glasses any longer. God of time and transformation, we remember the forced evacuations and incarcerations of 120,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry began on February 19th, 1942. We remember that the elders of the church were sent to internment camps and held onto their faith and hope in you behind barbed wire. We remember coming back home after the war to begin the healing and transformation of our church, our community, and our world. Continue to move us as your people towards healing and wholeness to those who may be marginalized, outcasted, and forced to leave their home so that we can meet the needs of this world with your love and compassion. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Over 80 years later, we continue to move forward from this legacy that is bonded to our church and the community we've, they've served. In 2022, President Biden declared the nation on the national observance of the Day of Remembrance, marking February 19th, as the day we remember the atrocities so that we may find healing and wholeness. For us all, we remember our loved ones in the past, and we remember those who are vulnerable now. Never again is now. May we have a moment of silence followed by the pastor prayer. Loving and gracious God, we lift up to you those who are on our hearts and minds. We lift up to you Annette Marshall, Lane Carthus, Amy Wake, Andrew Chang, Andrew and Eli Morris and their parents, Chloe Gong, Corinne Nagata in her continued health recovery, Dale Schwab, David Nakamura, Ginger Powell, Gwen Yoshimura, Harue Ng, Iris Law, and her, her aunt, Esther Tang, who will be having a procedure tomorrow. Jay Sasagawa, Joan Reichard, Camilla Young, Kikuko Niera, Kit Nishira, Leah Hartani, Lester Ng, Masahisa Handa in his changes to his health and moving to a new home. Robert Chin, Sherry Meredith, and Wendy Mizuno. We ask that you be with each and every one of these persons and that you pour your love and grace on each and every one of them with hope, grace, and mercy. We give thanks also for the many blessings uh, through the many hands that have been helping out with Hotel de Zinc this past week. And the many hands that continue to help that floating homeless shelter. God of all seasons, we look to you in remembrance 
of the atrocities that happened over 80 years ago. You stood in shock as you read the executive order. And you stood in line as they all filled into assembly centers and buses and isolated makeshift camps. You waited patiently with them as they made a home in a place that was not supposed to be. Just like the Islamites in the wilderness, you walked with them and gave them hope. You stood beside them, found ways to bring a new normal to the camps filled with gardening, dances, and baseball. For years, you kept them safe from harm as the war continued and the prejudice was at bay. You even gave them a fighting spirit to help the country that condemned them. God of all seasons and transformation, you have always brought your people from out of the wilderness to a place of hope and healing. Continue to heal us as a community and a country. Continue to give us hope that this will never happen again to your people, to those labeled immigrants, to those who are marginalized and outcasted, and to those who may be scapegoated and persecuted based upon their ethnicity, gender, age, or any label that promotes division and hate. Help us and move us from a season of remembrance to a season of transformation by helping and caring for those whom we have been praying for as a congregation, by remembering those who had to endure the pain and suffering of incarceration due to ethnicity, by recognizing and supporting those around us who endure any form of pain and suffering. Continue to transform us, continue to move us, always and forever. As your people, Lord God, we lift up to you these things along with the prayer you taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Time for the offering. If the ushers please come forward.
The scripture today is Mark 1, 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Thank you, Amanda, for reading the scripture and for your lovely children's time. Um, we are like bees, but what we do matters. What we do matters. Um, would you join me with a short prayer one time? Gracious and loving God, as we commemorate the day when uh, Japanese American citizens were incarcerated, as we begin this season of Lent, can we just ask that you be with us and provide your Holy Spirit and fill our hearts with your love. May all the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. Um, I'd like to thank Reverend John for leading us with the liturgy, and he made this liturgy um, and uh, beautifully crafted and very powerful. So I want to thank Reverend John. Thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, as Reverend John explained, and uh, you already had the liturgy, so you know that tomorrow actually is is called the Day of Remembrance. So what happened? Uh, when you go to JACL, Japanese American Citizens League, they had the, they have a very good explanation of what happened, why it happened, and why we remember this day. So what happened on February 19th um, in 2000, uh, in 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt uh, signed Executive Order 966, which gave us the U.S. Army the authority to re remove civilians from the military zones established in Washington, Oregon, and California during World War II. So why this happened? Uh, because of the Pearl Harbor and heightened uh, sense of threat of the U.S. citizens of the uh, espionage or sabotage. Uh, but the truth is that actually the lobbyists from the West try to uh, pressure the Congress and President Roosevelt to pass this law because of economic reasons. They, uh, these lobbyists, they talked about how they are occupying uh, the farms and um, local businesses. And um, so it was jealousy and evil thoughts behind it and racism. And, you know, justice representatives raised constitutional and ethical objections to this proposal. That's why the U.S. Army carried out the task instead. And why do we commemorate this? Uh, why do we remember this? Uh, if you go to our website on our history page, you can read some stories of our own uh, members who experienced camp. Uh, Mary Chikushi shared how scared he was when she traveled fast, no. And Jay Sasagawa shares his story. Uh, personally, I remember uh, Tomoko Ojawa's story. And when I visited her, she shared with, shared with me her life story, how her mother passed away when she was 18 years old. And she actually gave birth to her first child in the camp. Can you imagine giving birth to the first child in that harsh environment? So this is the story of those who are within us, who are among us. What's the point of remembering this? Well, as a first generation Korean immigrant, uh, I have to acknowledge that it's kind of difficult for me to talk about this day of remembrance because it's like, um, it's because it can be a very sensitive issue and it's not my own experience. This is a very particular experience of Jap Japanese American citizens. About 120,000, uh, they say about 70,000 were uh, American born citizens. 
And then just as it is, uh, I can't, I would never understand what it's like to live as an African American in the US. I would never pretend like I would understand what uh, the Japanese American community went through because of this. Nevertheless, uh, as a lead pastor of this faith community, I felt obliged that we need to talk about this. Because it is to remember the past is to think about what we are called to do today. In 2017, a wonderful documentary film came out, and at the time I was serving at UJCC, so I was able to watch this with our congregation. And could you show the next slide? It's called, and then they came for us. Have you watched it? How many of you? Okay. Oh, we should watch it at our church. We should, we should pick the date. Actually, some of our members were kind of acted as a background figures extras when they really filmed this because they, they were filming in Fresno. So this documentary talks about how uh, how they suffered. And of course the title, and then they came for us, was inspired by a poem by Pastor Martin Niemeller, a German pastor. And he's a very controversial figure. At first he supported Nazi, and then later he got captured by Nazi. That's when he realized that what he was doing was wrong. So let me read this poem for you. So during this movie, uh, um, when they were having this Never Again Is Now movement, uh, a Japanese lady reads this poem. Well, next slide. It goes like this. First they came for the communist, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. So to remember what happened is to remind ourselves that something like this never happened again. And it reminds us that we are called to stand for one another. We are called to be guardian angels for one another. From the scripture today, there are two things that are very interesting to me. You know, according to Mark's version of the story, if you read uh, Matthew's version and Luke's version, Mark's version is very simpler. He says, next slide, please. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. So he doesn't talk about the three famous temptations of Jesus. Do you remember that? The first temptation was, you're hungry, turn this stone into your bread. The second temptation, the Satan took him to the high mount, uh, to the top of the temple, jump off and then angels will catch you. The third temptation was that the Satan took him, the devil took him to the high mountain, bow to me and I will give the whole world to you. And Jesus refused, resisted all these temptations by the word of God. Do you remember the story, right? But Mark's version of the story does not have that. Instead, it seems like he's saying while he was in the wilderness, he, he was tempted, he was with the wild beast, and he, the angels waited on him. He talks as if these three things happened together. When you read Matthew, angels only appeared after the temptation. When you read Luke, there is no mention of angels at all during the time of wilderness. And I think Mark's version of the story really resonates with me. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was going through a hard time, the time of wilderness in my life, I think about years ago when I was in Berkeley, at the time my church, the church I was serving, I was a youth, as a youth pastor, was going through a very hard time. It was divided. There were blackmailing. There were uh, so many ugly things going on at the church, the things that should never happen at the church and that really hurt my soul. You know, and there was a temptation for me. I was tempted to quit. I was tempted to quit being a pastor and maybe I should quit everything and go back to Korea and do something else. And there were wild beasts around me, those who are trying to pull me down, hurt me. But I also uh, admit that there were angels, angels around me who were encouraging me and uh, providing and praying for me and who were giving the very helpful advice to just keep going, keep going. 
Uh, and I think our life ex experiences tell us that. And I know many of you are going through the time of wilderness right now. I know some of you shared with me the prayer request for someone you love and care who's going through a permanent illness or chronic pain, someone who's going through a very hard time at work, someone who's going through a relational problem. And when we go through this time of wilderness, usually these things happen at the same time. There are temptations, there are wild beasts, but there are angels around us. You know, what I learned in Fresno is that during the time of internment camp, there was a UMC pastor named Melvin, Reverend Melvin. So what they did, uh, this uh, Caucasian church, they, uh, they moved into Japanese American houses so that uh, to protect them from vandalism because all the properties were attacked and vandalized. So these uh, young persons, those white people moved in so that they can protect them. And that's why I heard that the UMC grew in Fresno. So in times of wilderness, in times of hardship, also angels are waiting for us. And I hope that as we uh, begin this season of land, as we begin this uh, wonderful season together, we remember that there can be temptations there can be wild beasts around us, but there can be angels around us. And actually, we are called to be guardian angels for one another. I think this is something that scripture is teaching us today. See, during the season of Lent, sometimes uh, everyone's Lenten practice is different. Sometimes people give up on sweets, some, some people give up on chocolate or candy, or some, some people give up on something to give out. And um, let me emphasize that everyone's spiritual journey is different, and you don't have to do that. It's not my intention to force you to practice or observe lantern. Everyone's spiritual journey is different, and whatever you decide to do, that's fine. That's totally fine. Personally, I, what I decide to do is to give up on one hour every day to uh, do this soul Bible study and share my reflection online. So. Um, I've been doing this for four days now, so when you go to our website, you can see my devotional every week, every day. It will post it 8 a.m. in the morning, so I schedule it to be posted, so I don't wake up 7 and post it, <laughs> just schedule it before, so it will be posted 8 a.m. in the morning. So if you are so inclined, you can check it out. And I forced myself to record something every day, actually, so that's why I got this keyboard. <laughs> um, so don't expect quality. So <laughs> I, it will be just one hour, one take, and then I will just share a song, a song a day, in that way. Um, but whatever you do, it will be valuable. But I would encourage you to consider this one thing: if there is someone who is going through a hard time, in the on this day of remembrance, uh, as we begin this season of Lent, if there is someone who is going through a hard time, who is going through the time of wilderness in their life journey consider to be a guardian angel for that person especially during this season of lent how about we we be the angels waited for jesus uh, the little jesus around us the angels who are with those who are going through a hard time what's really interesting uh in this passage, next slide, please, is that as soon as uh, John was arrested, Jesus went back to there. You know why John the Baptist was arrested? Because, because he spoke up. He spoke up against the King Herod and Herodias, that it was, it was not a just thing. It was unlawful. He stood up against the emperor, the king. That's why he was arrested. And you can imagine that everyone was scared. And according to scripture, as soon as he was arrested, Jesus, instead of running away, he went back there. He went there to be with those who are scared, to, to expand the kingdom movement, to proclaim the message, repent and believe in the goodness. And I think that's what we're called to do, to stand up and to continue to stand with one another. May God bless our Lenten journey and help us to be the guardian angel, angels for one another. Amen. Thank you.
We'll now have hymn number 451, Open My Eyes That I May See. Please stand if you are able and join us. Even if it feels like you are going through the time of wilderness, even if there are temptations, even if there are threats or wild beasts around you, may you remember that God's angels are waiting for you. May you go in peace. Amen. <laughs> 